recording, so we've got a number of people. We've got five people. Would you guys mind introducing yourself? So I'm Marchin, founder of Open Source Ecology. We've got Matt Droder, RossAgriculture.org. And uh, can you just just a word on who else is on the call here? Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, Ian McMahon. Um, I'm a ROS developer um, working with MoveIt, but I also maintain uh, ROS uh, software stack for uh, Rethink Robotics in Boston. What is MoveIt and Rethink Robotics? Are those sure. open source projects or? So we think robotics is a commercial company making like collaborative robots, um, uh -huh. essentially robot arms that are uh, have a, are essentially forced and torque limited, such that they can work around humans hmm. and, uh, without a cage. But yeah. they also have sensors throughout, such that they can detect when they have impacts with the environment or um, over torque the arm and and can react essentially. Um, yeah, Move it is an open source project. And that is uh, essentially a motion planning framework um, to, to allow for really more advanced um, motion planning algorithms to be prototyped and implemented and um, in some cases used in factory floors, uh, which is not incredibly common. You don't usually uh, use a planner in a, in a manufacturing environment. You would typically uh, plan for the arm to move to exact locations and uh, in, in joint space or uh, in Cartesian space. And uh, that's because you're afraid it would collide with the environment. That's what um, so move it is kind of taking sensing and allowing you to do planning in a collision free environment. What's the website on that? Right. What's the website for move it? Move it dot Ross dot org. Motion planning is this is this for robotic arms? No, oh, motion planning for robotic arms. Wow. Interesting. Do you guys by the way, like on the robotic arm, do you guys use any open source robotic arms? Are there any ones out there that are workable at this point? Ah. Sorry, sorry, I was talking to myself for a second there. No, I, I asked, is there any open source robotic arms that are in a well-developed enough state that you can apply move it to it? That is a great question. The uh, short answer is no, but I would love to see that change. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could work on that too when we're done with yeah. this. All right. Uh, I... This is Jeremy, Hi, uh, Jeremy. Adams. I, um, so a couple things real quick. So I know Matt through, we worked together at Autonomous Solutions in Utah for several years. And uh -huh. I actually was one of the first developers on his project where um, Arch Orchard Vineyard. Um, and so we did a lot of stuff together uh, regarding Orchard Vineyard applications. And so... I kind of caught up with Matt. We actually also both went to Roscon together, oh. and um, we, we were kind of talking about this for some time before that, and then during the meeting, we kind of got a little more in-depth about it. Um, anyway, at Roscon, I would say the, the question, I met a company, there's a robotist company there that makes the, the turtle bots, the new turtle bots, and... They had a, I forget, I have all my paperwork here, but they have like an open source arm yeah. uh, hardware. I can't remember the name, but Called anyway. Open Manipulator. Yeah, that's right. And a uh, tiny little guy, though. You can, yeah, it's tiny, but I think they claimed that it was scalable and 3D printable mm -hmm. kind of thing. But, um, so th that would be something if you're interested in arms to look into robotics. Um, they're a little pricey, I mm -hmm. recall. 
but uh, you know it's it's cheaper than a. Uh, did you say you work for a rethink? <laughs> it's cheaper yeah. than a. It's cheaper than a rethink plot. Anyway, right. I uh, also I I've been in mobility mobile robotics for a while. I did uh, work for L3 Unmanned Systems. Uh, like I mentioned, I work for Autonomous Solutions. But now I'm more in the material handling space. So I work for Intelligrated. Uh, we're part of Honeywell now, and, um, and I do a lot more stuff with arms. And, and actually, I was going to mention to Ian that uh, World Movement Day is coming up, so <laughs> we're actually thinking about participating. But oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Jeremy, do you have a link to that open source robotic arm that you just mentioned? Yeah, Robotis. R O B O T I S dot com. Robotis dot com. Yeah, open source science is they sell servos. You can pull them together with a couple of links. But the underlying servo is not open source, so it's just like buying an off the shelf component. Uh -huh. I don't think there's truly any open source arms. Yeah. They're like everything transmitting motors, motor drivers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. True. They have plans for the hardware though, but I guess you could rework the the um, motors for. Yeah, the, I guess yeah. If you don't have motor. the software, that's hard. All right. Pedro. Hello. Hi. I'm Pedro from North Star Robotics. I basically work, work with Sean. Um, he says we have interest in cross and open source. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, Matt, you want to continue? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got the base platform can control the track drives through electronic controllers. Um, some of the goals were to possibly use, uh, have a RC option, so you could drive it around uh, through a joystick of some sort. And then the second option is fully autonomous using a Raspberry Pi and a GPS. But I was wondering if anybody had suggestions on a pathway forward for the RC option. Yeah. So, so are you guys all uh, interested in contributing to actually making this this open source tractor work? So you can contribute some design or or some effort towards that. That's the idea, Matt. That's how you uh, how how'd you position this meeting? Um, an agenda, Sean. Thank you. That's a great suggestion. But agenda uh, next for next Tuesday would be good. Um, but basically, um, maybe start out with an architecture and overall design, and then maybe some sensors. We can talk about what what we would need to make it autonomous, or if uh, somebody has has done that portion. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we can share the document we were working on last time here so the notes that we have so far from last week and this document is openly editable so if you click in uh, click on this it's a Google Doc where we just sh showed the components Arduino with RC shield Raspberry Pi to solenoids to hydraulic track motors for skid steering the way that the the tractor looks right now I don't know if any of you have seen it but uh, let, let me uh, let me share my screen maybe so that you guys have you guys seen the the actual tractor that we're interested in driving been to the website okay um, it's a basically a, a, a skid steering two track tractor one one wheel one wheel drive on each side so just like this here that's the workshop that's coming up in two weeks and uh, it's got a power unit in the middle of it and it's got hydraulic drive with a heavy-duty hydraulic motor 
and tracks. So that's the basic platform. We can connect to that by, if we have solenoids, electric solenoids that, that are used instead of the, typically we use manual hydraulic valves. Here we would use solenoids to drive this thing off from GPS or from the remote control. So that's, that's the basic system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so where do we go from here, people? So, um, as far as the work on our side, right now we are pretty much finalizing the CAD. We're, we're actually putting a Bobcat quick attach plate on the front of this little tractor and doing the, the final uh, CAD work and detail. Now, the hydraulic system is somewhat independent from that, in a way, and the, we basically treat everything as a module, so all these things can be developed in parallel. But uh, in the simplest instance, we would drive this, you know, like for initial testing, we could have the hydraulics valves, plain valves, and then we can replace those with the solenoids to to make this run autonomously. Um, so, Matt, you're saying what's the what's the easiest implementation of RC control? That was our working question. Uh, we have actually somebody that's working on an RC module in terms of an Arduino, uh, just an Arduino version of that. So, not sure if. Uh, but we're actually expecting somebody to ship that in over to us. It's uh, James Wise, a collaborator here. Um, so that that's that's looks like it's happening, and those route, routes could be parallel. Um, Microtrack controller. So here's the work on um, on the wiki we have on opensourceecology.org/wiki. Microtrack controller version 17.10. 17 for 2017 and 10 is for October. Um, so yeah, here's a simple diagram. We've got relays, a little Arduino. Um, let's see. And we've got, let's see, I guess the we have, uh, I haven't looked, I just, I'm just looking at this for the first time, but basically we, ha we would have an RC module. I'm not really seeing where the RC is in this diagram here, um, unless those, yeah. Can anyone tell where, where the RC is on this? I don't see it. Let's see. Not sure. It's not here. Um, this would be... Okay, so this would be a box where... Yeah. Okay. So this doesn't have it. So we would have to put on a Wi-Fi shield on a Arduino. To, if this is... Yeah, I guess this could be like if we're not seeing the remote control part, like if this is the receiving thing with a with a Wi-Fi shield, then this could work. But I guess it's um, halfway done. Uh, the the sending part Mark, may not be. Put that there. link into the tractor document so we can get to it. Yeah. So. So RC control. I'm gonna link it right to this thing here. Uh, RC controller right there. That's what we have. Something I've played with recently that has uh, built-in like RC modules and uh, uh, a lot of GPIO uh, and some interesting IO additional stats like motor drivers and stuff has been the, the BeagleBone Blue. Mm -hmm. It might be an alternative to the um, Raspberry Pi. It might be able to get a lot Combining the Arduino and the BeagleBone, or Raspberry Pi into BeagleBone Blue. Yeah, here the the idea with the the RC was that uh, the independent RC module that it can go parallel with with. Uh, those would be, let's say, independent modules. Uh, but yeah, I'm not clear about okay. If we use beagle, blo beagle bone or however we go from the Raspberry part from the GPS part. Uh, the the notion we had last time was that we are going to interact 
with the Arduino either with the RC controller or the Raspberry Pi. So we would have outputs from the Raspberry Pi going to the Arduino either from the RC controller or from the the Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't have any 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 work on uh, implementation of that. So I'm all ears. So I didn't know if we wanted to use like a Bluetooth game controller and then go into a device and then control it with that. Uh, somebody has has done that. And what are some of the benefits and drawbacks? On the RC controller side? Yeah, just using like a game controller, a Bluetooth game controller into the Raspberry Pi. Or the big phone. Well, we want to, I think we want to like clarify maybe from here. So implementation routes. So let's, let's start a slide number two. You guys all can edit this. Um, so, so far we've talked about, so independent Arduino RC module. Uh, so that's going to get made. So maybe we should, we should say that, um, what is the route? Like maybe focus on not necessarily repeating the the RC control, like maybe take it in modularly. So we say we got the contr RC control just just by itself. Okay, that's all right. Uh, but I was thinking maybe the Raspberry Pi or what, whatever else we do regarding the GPS aspect. So the aspect of handling GPS signals and and running an autonomous program on a Raspberry Pi with um, GPS attached to it. Um, so GPS GPS module. Uh, what's what's the absolute simplest way to do it? And when I when I thought about GPS module, can even Arduino do it with a simple GPS module? Would that even be an option? Or because we want, I mean, we want to basically do things as simple as possible to do uh, the most basic item, like a very very simple Arduino with remote controller that gets you the the remote control part, like basically driving a a toy. Except this is not really a toy. Um, the GPS module. Uh, does anyone have insight whether Arduino itself could do that? To keep it simpler? To keep it uh, absolutely like simplest? Since Arduino is very, very accessible to, to everybody? Do you have an open GPS module that you wanted to interface with? No, no, um, no, that's, that would all be to be selected. So, so that's, you know, what, what's the simplest thing? Uh, I, I just Googled, uh, GPS modules for Arduino there stuff does come up and uh, but I don't have experience with this what do you I mean what are you hoping to do with that localized with that data yes yeah, so the idea is you have a field and by GPS you're saying uh, you're running an autonomous program that says move this tractor back and forth in very slow motion using the solar panel so it would be a solar tractor where we have a small hydraulic power cube that's run on a 300 watt panel, which as I mentioned, it will take you about about a thousand feet in a day. Uh, so you got slow motion around a field dragging a, a tractor, a chicken tractor, and you're moving back and forth on it, just pre-programmed, uh, pre-programmed to go back and forth. And uh, so basically the chickens get get to use like a whole acre or so or acre or two of land as opposed to being in their little chicken chicken cage so yeah. that's the idea uh so a very simple simple implementation uh application you need you need um the localization i mean you're using it for localization yeah right so <clears throat> i was i mean if you have the raspberry pi there um and matt was telling me that the general idea would be to, or an idea would be to put ROS2 on the on the Raspberry Pi. Um, we could run a we we could run the nav <coughs> nat, ROS nav stack 
uh, I'm guessing, on that Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, would, that would be, well, yeah. So the short answer is I would probably take it into the Raspberry Pi okay. instead. Uh, can you send a link to this nav stack? I would say that your miss idea makes sense. Just run it on the Raspberry Pi and integrate it into the robust localization. Okay. Uh, can you guys paste a link into the document as far as what uh, the software there? Somebody doing that? I got. It. You can do it. I'm already there. And, and the hardware, so we need a Raspberry Pi. What else is on top of the Raspberry Pi? There's a GPS module. Do we have a link to that GPS module? Uh, you mean the hardware itself? Yeah. GPS? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I've used, like, all you need is a NEMA receiver, right, Matt? Are, are we going with, you had some other thoughts on GPS? Um, thoughts on the GPS is uh, a couple questions about going the speed three feet um, per minute. And then if we use something like um, a DGPS receiver, like one of those Garmin's for they run around 150, um, would we be able to filter and be able to use that? I mean, it's going to give us generally where we are, but as we're moving, I don't know if we're going to be able to tell. So you're thinking like the Pixie? Um, I can bring a Pixie and we can test with it. Um, but I was thinking the GPS or some smaller one. I just don't know how much we should invest in the GPS at, at those speeds. Or, I mean, you make a point. At those speeds, do we even need GPS? Or can we just use, uh, could, could we <laughs> quite simply just use encoders? And, and no, I mean, you want to... Yeah, I mean, you could do it. No, I don't think encoders would work forever because you're going to get error. I mean, you can know which direction you're moving, but if you're on a slope or, you know, you're in mud or something, then the motion will be different. You got to you gotta have some feedback. Yeah, you have wheel slippers, so you can localize other ways. So that's what you can use vision to localize yeah. based on Yeah. Uh, now vision is a, is a harder story to implement so we've got so so I mean right now we're trying to, to get this within the two-week period is something that's implementable that we can actually run that's why we just said okay let's do GPS as a simple system because vision would be a little more complicated unless you guys can pull it off I think GPS would be easy even if it's sloppy to begin with yeah yeah uh, GPS IMU and encoders are all um, viable options, and, and you can even use the post EKF to do that. Um, it's a package that essentially can filter those together and give you decent uh, decent ideas of your orientation and how far you've moved. Matt, didn't you use the, did you guys use the EKF back in ASI, the Ross EKF? No, uh, we didn't. Oh, okay. That's what we that's a good standard package, the GPS I am doing. Um, just to take a step back, I was looking more at the MicroTrack controller, and it looks like it's using uh, uh, Zigbee from the Arduino to relay those com commands. Um, it says a, a oh, Arduino XB. Mega. In the Zigbee long range. Zigbee? Mouser. From Mauser. Okay. Okay. You say that's Zigbee? Uh, that, I think that it's the difference between a, a, um, a kind of general name and a, and a, uh, and a, make or a brand name so Zigbee is kind of the protocol I think and, and ZB is the like, brand or the other way around okay all right um yeah have a question about
about the encoder. I don't know if um, we can show the slide with the sprocket and the motor, but do you have any suggestions on the wheel encoder is a little tricky about how accurate we need them. Do we need wheel encoders or would GPS be enough? Um, if we can add wheel encoders, it's, it's better. It's better like, uh, yeah. Do you think we have it's realistic for this time frame or? <laughs> I mean, because the way I'm thinking is GPS. Okay, that's easy now. When because that's like pretty much hardware laying on top of a controller. When you talk now, you're talking about adding more mechanical integration to the to the tractor. L let's show you the actual. Uh, what that looks like. Yeah, so there's a working document. Uh, let me paste the link to this other working document on uh, uh, this one here. So. So MicroTrack Working Doc is right there. I just linked it. And in that document, it's going to be what, page four, was it? Or what page is that going to be? Four. More like seven. Page seven is the mo hydraulic motor. It's got a, it's a, that's how it looks. It's got a sprocket that's bolted onto this kind of a wheel mounting plate kind of thing. And uh, we could add an encoder somewhere like, like there, but it does require mechanical integration with that. Like uh, the way it's going to be, the hydraulic motor is going to be mounted on a plate. If you look at my screen, um, there's going to be a mounting plate that's going to be this thing that I'm drawing in there that's in blue. We're going to somehow mount this to the rest of the frame. Um, with a mounting plate that looks like that. Uh, so if we could mount something like on this back surface of this hub here, that's that's doable, or something around the hub. Um, but yeah, that's 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 how we could do it. Now, I mean that that gets to be more complex than uh, yeah. Like uh, I'm not sure I would suggest it as phase one because if we could get away with with GPS as phase one and do some basic experiments with that we can add this but I think for a four-day build that might be pushing it unless unless we're like we've got enough people there which leads me to say I know that Matt's going to the to the event itself but any are any of you other people uh, going as well I can go I live in Missouri actually who is this speaking this is Jeremy Jeremy okay yeah, where do you live in Missouri? I'm in St. Louis. Okay. St. Charles, to be precise. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that getting that encoder in place would be realistic in that time frame? What do you think, guys? I don't know. I'm still kind of, as slow as you're going, I almost feel like GPS alone might... That's what I was going to say. And even if it doesn't, I would almost tend to go to like the Pixie and try that. Right? Uh, I mean, what do you think, Matt? We've talked about those kind of things in the way back. <laughs> way back. Um, I put a link to that he is has used some of those or can suggest any any of those. Uh, where's the Pixie link? The differential.
Oh, Matt, can you pump in the link to the document? Did under implementation. So that's a little bit more expensive GPS, but I think it'll give us a better position. I'm sorry, where's the, where's the link? I'm not seeing a link. Um, it's on here. Page six of the autonomous computer vision. Uh, page six? Track. Ah, you're way all the way up there. Okay, I'm going to move that up to page page three. I didn't see you working there. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. So that's a more advanced version of, of GPS. It's got GPS and what else? What's GNSS? Lonas. It's just another constellation. Huh. It means you have better coverage, more satellites. Uh huh. Um, GPS is GNSS. Like the name of the system is GNSS. And Lonas. Uh, GPS, they, they do, there are different constellations of satellites that provide GNSS. Uh, how much is this, this board? 595? No, it's over $2,000 repair boards. That just gets you the board. You have to integrate it and get into your circuit. Yeah, it's pretty expensive for now. Um, yeah, we, we could try. I mean, um, what's the cost on a, on a, so we're talking about $150 versus, versus what, like the 600 just for the board itself here? No, it's 2000 it's by a kit. This board won't get you anything. Okay. So like, so we're talking right now $150 versus 2000 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe save this more advanced version for, I don't know. I mean, first try, I would go with a simpler thing. Um, and the state of art in GPS, I mean, they have... Um, can somebody fill me in more on what's the limit of GPS versus this? I mean, what, what are the, the accuracies involved for comparison? What do you... I'm not sure that understand the question. Well, what's the accuracy? How much, how much uh, resolution of the of coordinates are you actually getting? Like, how many feet, inches? So I'm not sure about the pixie, but if you have a differential or uh, RTK solution, it should be sub centimeter. If you have standard GPS, it'll probably be 10, 20 meter. Uh huh. So sub centimeter versus multiple meter scale. Yeah. yeah. Have you got so the tractor's not built yet? Have we built that yet? Yeah. We've built uh, similar versions, but no. Right now we're building this thing that we're building the solar driven power cube during this workshop. So basically the, the tractor has its own engine which is 16 horsepower but you can likewise instead of that engine plug in the solar power cube. So you have two choices of power, the solar one or the, the gasoline engine. And the solar power cube is just a tiny, it's a one cubic foot uh, cube that has the hydraulic pump in there. Yeah, the sub centimeter. Yeah, so so today the sub centimeter range is is obtained at a cost of about two thousand dollars. Is that? I think that's right. Uh huh. Uh, is that the is that the best solution we ever found, Matt? It seems like we found stuff that was sub five hundred uh, for. Kind of differential. I thought I remember having those conversations. 
think you're muted, Matt. Yeah, so there's a lot of different types of GPS that are going to give you different data. So um, you've got to find that sweet spot. I think, you know, if we could get submeter for a couple hundred bucks, that's, that's nice. Um, I don't know if we could try some of those $50 GPSs and see if, uh, how well they do. If we're not concerned about day to day, so a couple terms in GPS, there's a day to day and there's pass to pass. So if you just go up and down the field, you're going to get a different measurement versus if you go there the very next day and run. So you can also just buy, go to, uh, Amlid.com and buy a Navio Shield for the Raspberry Pi, or buy their their GPS units, their RTK for a couple hundred dollars a piece. Um, that's awesome. Can you post that link? What's, what's the name of that one? Amlid. M E M L I D. dot com. There's those guys, or there's also Early Robotics. They have their own uh, robot controller you can buy. It's Raspberry Pi with uh, GPS shields. I have a uh, Earl Brain too, the older version. Thought maybe bringing that playing around. Yeah, they had the version three, which is Raspberry Pi based as well. So, I mean, any of those would work. Uh, sorry, link, link, please on page two. I just dropped it into chat. Mlib.com. Uh, Navio 2 said it's uh, Raspberry Pi Tower uh, by Arjun Pilot and Ross. Uh, but it's for a drone. I don't know. What's the Arju Pilot accuracy? Would that do, or it's not good enough for this? So altitude is very accurate. What about the X, Y? Uh, what That's kind of? The resolution of the GPS, which is a couple meters. Okay. If you, if you want to have anything beyond that, then you can have these RTK set up a base station. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's that sounds good to me. That sounds like a workable solution, like 168 bucks, that's acceptable. When, when we do the GPS, like those satellites, um, those are floating up in space. There's GPS, GOL, GLONASS, <laughs> Baidu, Galileo, SBAS. Are those free connections for all of them? Yeah. Like, who actually funds that? Like, um, who's paying for that? Yes, yes. Bonas is Europe, and Galileo. Bonas is Russia. Uh -huh. Galileo is Europe. And, I don't know, different governments. Okay. Yeah. And is the idea that like beyond GPS, 
RTK, you're saying real-time kinematics. I mean, what kind of, is that a different set of satellites or that's just higher power processing? base unit and from the base unit you send corrections to uh -huh. the roving unit yeah. and then uh, those corrections enable it to get uh, sub inch accuracy right and is that uh, like the base station there th that kind of technology that's that's much more expensive um, I don't think it has to be I'm I mean, usually it's the same kind of receiver, and all, all it does is read some calculations and send corrections uh -huh. to, the ro to the roving unit. But would this, um, would the MLID, the, sorry, the Navio, Navio 2 here, would that be extensible to the base station? Like you can add that later? or uh, You'd have to get two reach modules and communicate over okay so it's different technology mm -hmm. you can check the amlet bridge it's another of their modules up there and those for rtk uh-huh let's see how much is that stuff 235 for these yeah um hmm of it, but there's a bunch of, it might be free for, I don't know, there might be available correction systems, but sometimes there's uh, over the air corrections, or who does that, Matt, who does the, um, who did we get corrections from, like, the Utah State, and there was like some other ones that had their own correction services. Entrip systems. Yeah, is it Entrip? Yeah. Right. The, the name of, the, of those corrections is Entrip. Uh, there are different providers of Entrip uh, corrections, like Entrip servers. Yeah. So you don't. For those, you don't need a base, though, right? The, you, you need a way to connect to the server providing the corrections. And you need uh, the server to have a base station uh, close to you. The base station cannot be more than 10k, 10 kilometers away from the from the rover. Right. Mm -hmm. You need two reach modules or just one, and then. Added to the Someone know the answer to that? Do we need one of those or a couple of those? I believe you will need two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. And as far as open, is this open source? That's that's not open source. Is this the Navio? As far as the hardware itself. The question would be, are there any open source hardware solutions on this front here for... I'm not sure, but at some point you're going to reach it's all closed source. Like most of it is on that chip. The chip itself is the thing that does uh -huh. the GPS or everything else around us, like power and comms out, which is... Mm -hmm. Are any of those chips open source or no? No. I see. left here um, so yeah I think if we kind of have some options but basically the Raspberry Pi a GPS um, and an IMU maybe the Navio or maybe some uh, different path but the software what's nice uh, about the software is it doesn't matter if we can we just use the Raspberry Pi the ROS stack would be the same or similar okay 
And, and the Raspberry Pi with GPS, what is the link to the actual GPS unit for that? Would be, would that be like Garmin GPS or or what is that? No, the no, you wanted the sh the shield. Shield. The Navio two. Okay. So. So that's what we're talking about here. Okay. That could be good. Raspberry Pi. So you, okay. Are you in creating uh, like a little simulator up on with Gazebo either on uh, the Construct Sim so we can put the packages together and play around? have the RDF uh, we have the model I didn't know if there was another kind of differential drive model already in Gizmo this is a simulator oh, that oh. can you can you put a link to the simulator change all the some of the properties to make it more in line with our, our um, I mean we don't exactly have to I wouldn't think we would have to take the uh, create a uh, URDF for it but we could probably take the Husky and modify it such that it's similar to our setup it might be quicker I mean with the with the pieces of the model If it's all it's all catted out in pre cad and whatnot, just expose it. We can export it as a collada. So in you guys use pre cad? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. As far as using Gazebo two though, do we want like a terrain uh, map so that I mean, this isn't going to be driving on a flat surface? Yeah. Um, Realistic. Right, so the terrain map, uh, I can show. Um, let me see. 
let's see. Al let me look at that Alec log here. Terrain map, let me get you to that. So, oh yeah, so if you look at my screen, which I believe I'm still sharing, here's the actual map. So, where it's going to be, so these are what, uh, five, um, what are these, five foot contour, ten foot contours? But the land that we're talking about is in a, this this area, if you see my cursor, basically between the two, not this thing with the lines, but those are like the actual plant outs of hazelnuts and chestnuts. But this area, which is 50 feet wide between the two tree lines, it's 50 feet wide and about a thousand feet long. This is what, um, what it actually is. And uh, if you want to see... Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much that helps, but that's... Let's see, there's Google Map coordinates here. Uh, and there's actually a, a QGIS file with the, these contours, if anyone's interested. Some of the OSRR folks have a open map to Gizzy. Oh, I'll get that. Yeah. We need a digital elevation model from that. Yeah, you can. There's actually, like, right below that, let's see, um, let me like see. If we get into uh, lat long, there's, uh, yeah, I think that... pointing you to, uh, some kind of global land cover, glcfumd.edu. They have some kind of something where you can download. Looks like. Um. Yeah. Let me put this, the first, like if you want to get the digital elevation model here from this, that's um, this main folder link, the link on the very top uh, would have the QGIS file there, but how do we do it? We picked it off from, oh yeah, yeah, some, yeah, some data sets off the internet, mm-hmm. Somebody put a link to the gazebo in the slide deck. Uh, link to gazebo is in um, on slide two there. Okay. Um, so, what do you think, Matt? It's good. We've got some options, and I think we have some parts and a path forward. Um, I don't know how to coordinate or break apart the pieces of the gazebo model and the NASDAQ and adding all of those those things. Is there a way to uh, break those pieces apart so multiple people can work on those? Is that a who's that a question for? For me? Or oh, Jeremy and Ian? Sorry, I was typing. 
but did you need, what were you saying? Is there a way to like break up uh, some of the work? If, if Ian, I don't know if you want want to play with this or if you want want to want to do any portion, but uh, definitely the option is there. Um, it doesn't have to, you know if you want to make the model of it, and that's cool. Or if you want to play around with it, but I didn't know if there's some way to you know break apart the pieces. Are you talking about for the model itself? Yeah, I think if we can get the simulator running around with the software, that's a pretty good uh, step. Um, Rural Robotics has a great tutorial using ROS2, uh, ROS2 in the Gazebo simulator. And once you get all of that software working on Gazebo, it's a, it's a pretty easy step. Not totally painless, but definitely less pain when you move to the real machine. Are you, are we wanting to do, I mean, because it's pretty easy to put ROS1 on a Raspberry Pi, um, and I'm just wondering if he's trying to, if time is a factor, then I'm not sure how much, uh, how much we're ready for ROS2. Okay. That also makes sense to me, too, because, uh, uh, Gazebo ROS plugins have not been fully ported to ROS2 yet. Um, it's just, it's if we were talking about this in three months, it would be a different story. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could always use the bridge, but I think this time, if you're just, if it's kind of proof of concept, then let's start with simple and then move forward. Yeah. I'm okay with ROS1 on the Raspberry Pi. That's real easy. I got a, I got a stick somewhere for my Pi 3. <laughs> Done. Nice. Um, okay, so if we don't, um, I was going to ask what encoder are we get? I mean, what IMU to use if we don't use that Navio, if we just get a GPS and then use Raspberry Pi? Um, how accurate does that IMU need to be? That's a great question. It, I'm assuming if we put it in the EKF, uh, it doesn't have to be that accurate. So what, what are what are we looking to use? Which, uh, which channel, which axis are we? I mean, are you talking about like a 9 axis, like a um, standard IMU with gyro? accelerometer and magnetometer? Good question. Um, generally what I do is I go to the ROS site, find the IMU page, and then find out what IMU works with that package and then use that IMU. Oh, okay. <laughs> More but, backwards approach. I like it. Yeah. I didn't know if that SparkFun one, I can't remember if it's like Dragonfly or something like that, if people are using that. Well, to that end, I wonder if there's like on the NASDAQ pages, they can list the combination and the, the localization accuracy of a G, GPS IMU combination. Like, do they give any uh, specification? Does anybody spec out, like, using EKF, what, what's a good combination of GPS and IMU? I'm not sure. I've heard talk on boards about that um, SparkFun Razor IMU, nine degrees of freedom. Um, I haven't personally used that one, so it's a fifty dollar IMU. Looks like you can pick whichever. On the EKF, looks like you can pick your ODOM. Oh, wait, we're not using both. IMU use. Page is a IMU um, ODOM and uh, GPS, if you like, to filter together. Yeah, are we? So, are we. Somebody mentioned wheel slip. Uh, I guess that would be taken care of, I guess. Compensate for that. Just there.
it's, if you buy it from spark fun or something it's pretty fast shipping and it'll be a week so um we can we can get to that so for next week's meeting maybe um we can try to get um, a simulation running around with just using gps and um, imu in the gps plugin is you guys know can we specify the accuracy we can see how bad it could be <laughs> for what what was our speed it's like three feet per feet. minute yeah three feet per minute yeah i'm guessing we're not going to have any problems and if we did why don't we just put a bumper on it and then yeah. back off <laughs> Isn't that, wasn't that your idea from before? Just put a bumper on it? And we'll just, I think just I remember having this conversation with you like about three years ago. Well, yeah, that doesn't even, prevent you from oh. falling into holes. That gets That's you true. obstacles, but not holes. Well, you, uh, I mean, you mark your map for a keep out in those areas. I mean, you have some localization. You can. How do we implement, so if you got the GPS, how do you implement the localiz localization with just GPS and IMU? Can you do that? Use the EKF. There's a, there's a EKF um, that can localize. I don't know what the output of that is. What's EKF? Extended common filter. Is it yep. yep, it's extended common filter. Yep. Is that a set piece of hardware? No, no, it's a software technique for okay. uh, taking multimodal sensor data and then uh, essentially filtering it together to give you a more accurate read. Uh huh. There's a ROS package for that inside the nav stack. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm guessing we'd use the global planner as part of that as well. I mean, for, for um, navigation as opposed to localization. This is where I'm... We were talking real about arms, I could give you a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only... Uh, maybe Matt, if you can uh, send everybody's email so we can communicate on email. Okay, I so don't maybe... have uh, Sean's email. Um, Ian, Ian, are you a Slack user? Uh, yeah, I am from time to time. From time to time. Um, oh, so I chat right there. Okay. I will. I want to be helpful where I can. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Just kind of. It's it's pretty uniform in mass, un unless there's a heavy implement on the front. Okay. And is it all made out of steel of some sort? Yeah. It's mild steel. Okay. That part might be a little tricky. 
And the weight is about 2,000, 2000 for that device. It's 42 okay. inches wide only. Yeah. Um, so if we have two, I don't know if we could do that, but um, we could figure out, couldn't we figure out the center of mass roughly or the center of gravity rather? I think you're supposed to be getting up and your fingers, fingers and then draw it in like this. You think it's that uniform? Yeah, we need a pro link. <laughs> um, a little, yeah. Uh, we'll see. I could do I could do the dynamic uh, the kinematic portion pretty easily, but that's maybe not the most useful thing. Uh, anyway, I can I can get something together that's probably not going to be accurate to reality, but it'll look accurate to reality. Plus or minus thirty five percent. <laughs> there we go. So you said it's about two thousand pounds, roughly. Yeah. I've not made a mobile platform for just many, many robot arms. <laughs> yeah. You should check out the husky one. That'll probably help get you started. Yeah, they do good stuff. I collab I was working with them on the Baxter uh, Ridgeback integration. I did the Baxter portion of it. And they did a great job with Ridgeback. We should probably talk to you a little more because I have a buddy at work who's working with Baxter and using MoveIt right now. So. Fantastic. <laughs> you sound yeah, like the right guy to talk to. <laughs> What'd you say? Put your send them to you ask in the form. Is that what I said? No, I'm happy, happy to help out where I can. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, you have a GitHub repository or GitHub organization set up? Um, you tell me, I, I, yeah, I have one, I do, open source ecology, can you find it? Because, uh, what do I need to do, invite you or some, something? Uh, not necessarily, I can kind of do it on my own, but then I can give you, give you access, or give rights to you afterwards, or whatever. It yeah. Actually matter. Or if you want to do it under Ross Ag, or... I don't know, yeah, yeah. Where, just do that, and then, then we can we can grab it from there. Sure. Okay. Ross Agricultural GitHub. That's it. That's. me an invite in there, I can make you a repository. Perfect. I'm, oh yeah, sorry, I'm, put my GitHub username in there. Uh, Yeah, so if you look at my screen, um, so you see, um, this is when you Google Factor E Farm, which is our farm. Our farm is this place between this long square, like right here where the marker is, and the area of interest is where my cursor is right there. That That's about a thousand feet long there, and about 50 feet wide between those two two tree lines. Yeah, so that's what we have to work with. Uh, I'll put that in. Uh, yeah, if you could put the GPS coordinates or the long, long lap coordinates for that. 
also a Google Jeremy, map. What GitHub account are you using now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, officially using the same one I used when I was at ASI. But isn't that like Jeremy the ASI or something? It was. I changed my. I took off the ASI just to be politically correct. Oh, well, so what's the. Just Jeremy A. Holy cow, some people took 3D images here of our construction. How did that happen? Huh. No, that's, that's good. <laughs> I, I watched your uh, TED talk a couple yeah. years back, I really yeah. liked that. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. While I was in grad school, I was seeing this about, I think, 2012, maybe? Whenever, whenever you were starting this. Yeah, I started this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Some people took. It's funny to find this. Uh, we were. So, this is the CD home thing. And some people took 360 degree pictures and they just put it up to the factory farm and somehow it's on Google. Huh. That's all right. Gave it access to their uh, Google Photos or whatever. Google index it all. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the house that we don't want to crash in with the tractor. That's on the north okay. part of the that's the north limit of uh, where we're gonna go. That's not on a Google Maps yet, I guess. The the Google Map I showed, I pulled up just before. Um, that structure right there is not shown yet. It's it's up at the northwest corner. Now, by that curve in the road. That's an old map here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, what else? Anything else to cover right now, or we're good for now, or? Yeah, I think we're good for now. We can chat by email and update these docs over the week, and then next week, same time. Okay. Um, yeah. Matt, if you want to email everybody with that info, or how you, however you connect it to everybody, but maybe you can do an email so we can follow up, have an easy way to follow up. Um, right now it's just on a discussion page on the Discord site. It's on the slide. Yeah, I would recommend keeping a lot, every, as much as possible there uh, to get people that didn't participate initially to actually be interested. The more that is there, the more that you'll get people interested. Okay. Uh, so that link is is there, right? That's on the first page. Yeah, discourse. Okay. And that's for overall Ross. This okay. So that's a thread on a discussion there. Okay. Cool. I see. Okay. Got it. It's on the first page of the working doc that we were just that we're oh, on. I see. Yeah. I'm gonna post that on uh, on our Facebook here. On this thing driving I'm not too concerned about that um, it'll be fun I'm not saying it'll drive well uh-huh no <laughs> that's that's pretty good you can automate a car with a brick and a bungee cord <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah Tell Elon uh, <laughs> you may disagree 
was thinking we just if we just got to move this tractor around the low tech way, just maybe tie a rope to some sort of sensor that um, it just goes around and around the pole. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the skateboard agile approach, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> skateboard. Yeah. All right. No, that's good. That's really good. I, I, I'm sure we're going to get something happening that time. We'll see. We'll see exactly what that is. Um, yeah. Now, Jeremy, so you want to just make sure that so register for that I can um, so that we're I'm keeping track of everyone who's registered I can send you more info on that so you can follow okay. up on that mm -hmm. um, originally Matt told me well I don't know he said there was a two per yeah so I was just gonna go under his yep uh, yep is that what I should do yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you should do. So, so I can basically, um, Matt, did you fill out? You filled out the the logistics form. I don't think the. I'm, I'm, maybe I haven't filled that out yet. Okay. So in that, I'll I'll ask you to do that, so you can fill out that you're bringing somebody else as well. Okay. It sounds good to me. Excellent. So yeah, let's continue the discussion. Uh, next week then, yeah? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Good. 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 With these models, one last question. Yep. Um, is there a good spot to ask questions about the tractor? I've never actually worked with it before. And I... uh, to, yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, I mean, just email me. Like, I'm pretty much, our team is working on it. Uh, we've got a development team. But, yeah, just just uh, email me. You got my, my email? Or, uh, I don't, but I could. Yeah, it's Marchin, M A R C I N, at opensourceecology.org. So um, just email me if you have any questions on the tractor itself. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you guys Source. have a board? I missed an E and that double E there. Um, s say it again. Uh, I'm looking on your wiki, Tractor yeah. Construction Set 2017. Yeah. There's a, there's a burn down and a task allocation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that where you're tracking? Um, we'll be tracking the task stories. And somewhat, but, um, if you want to use that task allocation board, that's, is that scrummy there we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to put it up there. It's freely editable, but I think people have been lax about putting in tasks. But yeah, that'll be useful if we want to do that. Yeah, that's that's an active chart. You can just go in there and add stories and drag them up and down. So so right now maybe. Um, so let's see. So Ian, for example, we can add that and say uh, simulations. <laughs> Something like that. Jeremy, what do you think you're going to be be uh, up to? Uh, I think I'm going to be up to hopefully uh, looking into the NASDAQ situation. And are we, are we picking a... We picked a GPS receiver or are we... Something that's serial and speaks NEMA. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty open. Works for me. Yeah. So yeah, as soon as you got, you know, if you want to, Matt, maybe just email me like what what you decide on, and, and we can take a look at that. 
Yeah, let's pretty much like maybe set up a, in this working document, you know, maybe start a page that says, okay, this is our choice of hardware and everything. I guess if you guys are, yeah, if you guys are bringing it or, I mean, how, how are we doing that? Or, um, I mean, let me know when I need to buy stuff. <laughs> so let's get a list of uh, items. A more, a more detailed systems diagram than the implementation diagram we have right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when would that be forthcoming? Would would that be something we can do before next meeting or? I'm Matt? sorry. Uh, just depending on which path forward, about what controller to use, and yeah, like the specifics, so so that we can buy the parts and stuff. I mean, man, um, yeah, like by next Tuesday. We really got a week, so by next Tuesday we pretty much got to order parts if there are any outstanding parts. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'll, I'll post up on um, the site and ask for some suggestions. I mean, one way, they make a really cheap GPS and IMU that they use for, um, that they sell on uh, 3D Robotics, uh, Earl Robotics use them. Uh -huh. And it's just, it's a package, it all comes together. It's a GPS and IMU unit. Uh huh. Um, a very low cost. I think it, the total unit is like a um, hundred dollars. Yeah. So just you know, everything is just a different grade of, of quality. And yeah, I think that's good to start with. Maybe a lower cost one, and then if we run into problems, we can we can always. Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, if we have fifty feet of wiggle room from side to side I mean can yeah I mean I think that should be good enough we need to keep within a, a strip of of land that's 50 feet wide that's that's a requirement essentially so if we yeah. can do that we can go back and forth like for the chicken tractor application that's all we need okay. and I think I don't know I mean I have the little DPS module and I am used so we could test that if it's good then then uh, it's good enough so yeah yeah I've, I've got a couple different GPS modules we can play with uh, and so that's our that unit is already built together yeah no that's good I mean if for the first implementation we can actually show that hey we actually got an, an autonomous tractor going on this field I mean that's that's a success right there okay yeah I, li I like that I would rather start out a little bit lower quality and then see where we go yeah yeah definitely we'll, we'll shake a lot of things down in the process and then see where we go from there okay. and uh, we have the hardware um, for the build excellent we're one week ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah no that's good that's good I think that that'll be a good route so mm-hmm okay so that's, that's great. You know, I mean, there's no deadline on that gazebo model. I don't want to feel like, you know. No, don't, no, it's fine. I'm going to, I'll play around with it and see what I can get done. Uh, I'll obviously do it in the open source so that whatever, you know, the lacking pick up on it, change, modify, do whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, yeah, obviously I have, uh, because I'm, I support both uh, Baxter and Sawyer as well as other things. Uh, there are other deadlines, but yeah, this, this is cool. So I want to see what I can do. You know? Yeah. Excellent. And then Matt, if you can just put a link in the working doc to what to, to the GPS IMU that you've got. So yeah, you can take a look at that. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, current hardware or something, or we can I'll put that in there. Yeah. Uh, you guys have the Raspberry Pi three? We have yours. I've got we one here there. as well. Okay. I can bring I actually have Three Raspberry Pis. I don't know which generation I have on my desk right now, but yeah, I think I've got the generation, the th third here. Got Raspberry Pi two. Sounds good. All right. All right. Well, uh, then uh, that sounds good. If no more questions, then we can take it again then next week, the same time, eight p.m. Um, and maybe we could do, if you can advertise, maybe uh, meet.jit.c slash open source ecology. That's yep, the usual. That. Okay. 
All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for the help, and we'll, this will be really good. I think that'll be a great thing. I'm gonna nice be in Wired. Call. We're gonna get into Wired because of this 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 little open source GPS robotic tractor <laughs> dragging out around little chicken pens. Yeah. All cool. right. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. So we'll talk. We'll talk next week. Have a good night. Good night. Bye bye. Later.